Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking about some things that make a home look cheap. And just so we are clear, sometimes something that is cheap looks expensive and something that is expensive looks cheap. Now, the first thing we have to talk about that absolutely is just a problem that needs to be addressed. And we have talked about before, but it has not changed anything. So we're bringing it up again, is the downfilled sofa. Yes, these are expensive. Yes, they can look beautiful when they're properly fluffed and taken care of, but nobody does that. So it always looks messy and kind of depressing. It always looks kind of like somebody just got out of it. It looks lumpy. They just don't look good unless they're properly fluffed, which takes a lot of work because usually these sofas are super deep and the down has to be fluffed all of the time and they look really good staged, okay? That's where we see it on social media. People are posting pictures or little videos of it and that's why it became such a big trend, but we don't need to do that in our homes because it's so much work and for something that's that expensive to look that cheap when it's not fluffed is just not a good idea. We want things that of course are beautiful and good quality and are high design styled pieces, but ultimately, you don't wanna to have to be taking care of something every second of every day to make it look good, or every time you get up off of it, doesn't need to be completely refluffed. What would be better is if you found a sofa that was a similar style and opted for a down-wrapped foam core cushion. This has the support of the foam in the middle of it, but the comfort of the down surrounding it, which is way better than having these sofas that just look lumpy in the space. And if you have this sofa, you certainly can speak with a furniture repair specialist to have new cushions made for it that are actually a lot more structured, that have a little bit more resilience to them, and, and that won't have to be fluffed after every single use. Sometimes what makes your home look cheap is actually a decorating mistake and it costs nothing to fix or repair because it, it just something that needs to be moved is actually the like statement plant or feature floral or whatever you want to call it. This I see all the time in a space that's staged in a home for sale. It's like a big plant in the middle of the space. Maybe it's on the countertop, the island in a kitchen, and it's like a giant plant that's filling up the space. Or maybe it's in the living room on a coffee table and it's like a way oversized floral moment that you're like, if you were sitting in the chair, you couldn't see past it. It's way too tall, way too high. I see this all of the time. What really gets me though is when I see it in like a primary bathroom with dual vanities and it's always in the middle it's just like a big tall plant it doesn't make sense there those are places where you want foliage to be a little bit lower so instead of getting some big tall plant opt for maybe a fern or some sort of floral arrangement that's quite low that's a little bit closer to the surface of that counter or table because ultimately it's going to make the space feel more open and feel more spacious when you have something really tall in the center of a space it feels like a wall it feels like it's blocking off the entire room so if you have that tall floral moment, put it against a wall. That's a great place for it. Put it on a console table, put it on the table behind a sofa that's against a wall or something to that extent, because then it's adding to the height of the wall and the ceiling instead of the height of the furniture in the middle of the room. Putting that plant against the wall will actually make the space feel bigger instead of making it feel smaller when it's on the center of a table in a room or in the kitchen or whatever. That's just weird to me. Also, we need to address faux plants that are too small. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're not the biggest lovers of faux plants, but sometimes that's what you do and that's fine. But you gotta find one that's tall enough, that has enough height. They usually come in those like kind of really little buckets that aren't, you know, they're, it's, it's not there for a reason. Like, you know, it's not a plant that's growing. It doesn't have roots. So it can have this little kind of pot on it. You gotta find something really big and substantial to help lift that up also to make the plant taller. So if you're looking at a faux tree and it's like five feet, it's probably gonna feel a little bit small. So get a big pot to put it in that'll raise it up a foot or even a foot and a half to get a six, six and a half foot tree. That's a great way to get that look you're after and do it a little bit more affordably and have it look more luxurious. Now that we're done talking about plants, be sure you stay tuned because someone special is going to come and visit in just a minute. You all know I think scale and proportion and the way furniture works with one another or all of the pieces together is so vital. And that's one of the things that can really make a house look cheap is when you make a mistake in the scale of furniture. And the number one place people make that mistake that I see that immediately makes a home look 
cheaper, inexpensive, or certainly makes your furniture look cheap is actually in nightstands. I don't like a nightstand that is lower than the top of a mattress. I like for it to either be at that same level or a little taller. Now, the reason for that is because nightstands that are below the top of the mattress, they look too small. They look shrunken, they look condensed, and they look inexpensive. It could take something that, you know, is actually really luxurious and beautiful, or maybe it was custom made, look like it's a flat pack piece of furniture. Even if you get a stool as a nightstand, let's say. Something that's too small is gonna look dinky, it's gonna look insignificant, it's not going to look luxurious or beautiful, so instead if you got a chair with a back on it or a taller stool, it would look more luxurious. It's all about the height of that piece. Here's an example. This space, this bedroom, has these nightstands that are too small. There are a number of other things happening with the layout, like, you know, there's a crib in the background. I would have centered the crib between the two windows and I would have taken the tall dresser and put it below the TV. But the real problem here is the way the nightstands are working with the bed itself. The nightstands and bed and the dresser actually all look like a set to me, so I know that's not the problem. It's actually the box spring on the mattress. It's too thick, so if you opted for a thinner profile uh, frame for the bed, it would actually bring that mattress height down a little bit so it would be at a good spot with the nightstands and they would look more luxurious and more expensive than they do right now. And I know a lot of people would say, just get taller nightstands, but if it's a set and the nightstands are made to work with the bed, then the problem is the mattress, not the bed and the nightstands together. So I wouldn't replace the nightstands, I'd replace the box spring, but that's just me. You could, however, replace those nightstands, of course, and it's definitely something to look at in your home. And this is a great tip for like a guest bedroom, right? You want your guests to have a great experience, you want them to come into your home and be like, oh my goodness, they live so beautifully, because I do, that's for sure, and my guests never have anything negative to say when they come to my home, but that's not the point. It's one of those things that makes the space look really luxurious, and you can get that hotel feeling of something that is very substantial feeling by having the nightstands be the right height. So be on the lookout for what the height of your nightstands are, and you may be even just able to swap out the legs or get some that are a little taller and will bring that nightstand up to the right height, and you don't have to replace everything. I think that's fantastic. Or getting a bed frame that's closer to the ground can actually make up that difference as well and avoid you having to spend a ton of money on something that you already have that maybe doesn't need to be replaced. So be on the lookout for the height of your nightstands because that can really make a big impact on how luxurious your home looks. It can make your home look cheap if they're not the right height and it doesn't have to be something that's expensive to fix. Do you know what I hate and looks cheap? A patterned rug. Maybe not all pattern rugs. Okay, we're gonna get into it. But for those of you with solid surface floors, and myself included, we love a rug, right? We love a comfortable moment. We love something soft under our feet, something tactile that we can touch or whatever. We love it, okay? But rugs are a make or break feature in a space. And you hear everybody all the time being like, oh, a rug that's too small looks cheap. Okay, we got it. We know that's like basic design information, 101, like we're past it. What I don't like is a rug with a repeating pattern. We love a rug that is vintage, that has some of these iconic moments or patterns in them that are interesting, right? That are designed to be rugs. We like a rug that is a solid color or something that has a gradient tone to it, something that has some flex of another color into it. That's also really great. But a rug that has a pattern like this, okay, like you're looking at now, it looks like you walked past a bin of clearance rugs at the grocery store and we're like, oh, I'm just here to pick up a, a gallon of milk. I might as well get a rug while I'm at it. It does not look luxurious to us. It does not look elevated or expensive. It looks like somebody sat there on some graphic program on their computer, made a little pattern and said, let's print it on a rug and then cut it into a bunch of different sizes to sell at some discount stores. That's what this looks like to me. I don't mean to be too harsh or negative on it, but it looks cheap and it's something we can all agree on. There are just certain things that don't look luxurious. They don't look expensive. They look like they're inspired by something that does look expensive and they're made to be looking interesting or I don't even know what to say about that. It's the kind of thing that it gives us the feeling of like a matchy matchy space. It's the thing that just doesn't feel like it's elevated. Look for a vintage inspired rug. That's better than some of these patterned rugs that just look cheap and, and you get 
the same color, you get the same feel, and you can actually really, really create a layer in the space and something rich and elegant and beautiful, even though it doesn't have to be any more expensive than some of these are. And if you're like, Garrett, I don't know what to do, I'm looking for this or that color, this pattern, look for something really neutral. Look for something simple that's just a solid color, or maybe you even look for a natural material. These can be great rugs also that don't involve a pattern of any sort, that don't involve a ton of colors, but they add something interesting into the space. I think that's a better way to go about getting something that works beautifully, that creates that comfort, that coziness, that warmth, but isn't looking cheap. And some of these rugs that are these solid colors or woven materials or whatever can actually be less expensive than some of these rugs that just look cheap. That's one of those big things that like, just because you spent a lot of money doesn't always mean it's, it looks expensive. Sometimes it can look really cheap and sometimes it is cheap and it looks cheap. You wanna be mindful of that. So I always say get inspiration, look for photos and then go from there and build on top of that. And so do that, you know, find inspiration photos for rugs and say like, okay, I like this, I like this, it's interesting. And they could be rugs that are thousands of dollars. And it's like, okay, well, this is the pattern and the color scheme that I'm liking and feeling. This is what's relating between all of these photos. So let me find something similar to that at my price point. Now that I have triggered myself and everyone else over rugs, let's bring Albert in so he can calm all of us down. Oh, we need it. <laughs> okay, everybody, here's our 19 year old little puppy. I just woke him up from a little nap, so he's not too happy about that, are you? Hmm? Oh, he just grumbled. Did you hear that? <laughs> Let us have it, Albert. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Albert's a little love bug. He loves me, and he also loves all of you, which is why everyone should take a moment and hit that subscribe button and give this video a like for him. Mm. Listen, at 100 years old, he's not doing anything that he doesn't have to do. Everybody always comments and says like, oh, he's not moving. Oh, is he a stuffed animal? No, he's real. You just haven't seen him at dinner time when the food gets served because he is not resting then. Let me tell you that for sure. But right now he's just like the prince of the palace and he wants to go back and have a little nap, don't you? Okay, we'll let you go. Mm. Oh, do you know what is an issue? No, not all of Albert's dog hair on me, okay? That's a, not a problem we're talking about right now. We are talking about lamps. That's the next thing that can definitely make a house look cheap is having the incorrect type of lamp in the right spot. Did that make sense? The wrong type of lamp in the wrong, in the wrong spot? <laughs> the wrong lamp in the wrong spot. There are just certain types of lamps that are meant for certain things. A very tall lamp that's very linear in nature is not for a bedside table. It's for a console table, it's for a buffet, it's meant to, you know, you have two of them flanking a beautiful big piece of artwork. That's what that lamp is meant for, not for a bedside table. And there are some lamps that are task lighting that are, you know, they can be repositioned and angled. They're not meant for a bedside table, they're meant for an office. I like to have a big, substantial, chunky lamp on my bedside table. I want something that the light is going to go down and go up. I don't wanna be able to sit in bed and see the light bulb. That task light is really great for having on a desk because I can angle it and point it at the paper I'm working on or whatever's in front of me, whether it's a book I'm reading or a magazine I'm looking at, and I can really get some great light on that specific area. That's what that lamp is meant for. And those really tall, stately lamps, they're great for creating a really stately feel. So having them in a dining room, having them in an entryway or on a console table in your living room, that's great when they're against a wall. Because just like with those tall plants, the tall lamps really elevate and add to the height of the space. You wanna be sure you're putting the right type of lamp in the right spot. And that doesn't mean you can't make something else work for you. Like this task style lighting can work in a bedroom, but I wanna see it mounted as a sconce over your shoulder so you can point it at the book you're reading. That makes more sense to me than having it pointed down at the bed or whatever or at the top of the nightstand on the nightstand because it did like what sense does it make where's the light going it doesn't add up and it actually can be quite harsh having the wrong type of lighting in the wrong spot the same thing goes for overhead lighting as a matter of fact so many people get these really cool and beautiful overhead lights because they're beautiful but they don't think about the fact that the light is pointing down when you're sitting underneath it at the dining table or on a sofa and it can actually be quite harsh and actually give you a really bad headache because of the angle the light is hitting your eyes it can also create a glare on your TV screen. So there are lots of things to consider when it comes to lamps and lighting that can really make a home look luxurious or look cheap or feel 
just not good. And you want to be mindful of that. So for me, if I'm having a lamp on an entry table, that could be a tall linear lamp. It could be a short mini lamp. That doesn't so much matter because we're just adding light into that space. It's not a space we're really using for anything other than walking through. But a lamp next to a sofa or on your nightstand, it's a lamp that we want to provide mood lighting and we don't want to see it. We don't want harsh lighting because those are spaces we're relaxing in. So you want to look for lamps that are offering diffused lighting or are pointing lighting in a direction that you're not looking in, that you're not looking over to the side. I'm not catching a light bulb out of the side of my eye because it's going to give me a really bad like ocular migraine that I don't want to be a part of. Now that we've talked about some of the things that are making your house look cheap, here are seven dated pieces of furniture you do not want to get rid of when you are redecorating. Be sure you check out this video right here and I will see you over there.